Nestled in the heart of the Driftless area of southwestern Wisconsin lies Richland Center. From its wild and wooded area to its archive of architecture, Richland Center is in the center of it all. Hello and welcome to Discover Wisconsin. I'm here on the Mapleside Footbridge. Originally used as a footbridge connecting the east and west parts of town, today it's more popularly used for taking in the gorgeous Driftless region. It's one of the many unique remnants of Richland Center's past. Today, let's uncover more of this city in the hills. Located in the southwestern part of the state, Richland Center is tucked halfway between La Crosse and Madison. Incorporated in 1842, it didn't take long for the small town to reach international fame. From the first organization of the women's suffrage movement at the city auditorium to the birthplace of an architectural visionary, Richland Center has a little piece of history for everyone. Frank Lloyd Wright was born in Richland Center in 1867 and grew to be one of the most recognized architects of the 20th century. His unique outlook on organic design paved the way for a new era of architecture. He enjoyed an extensive career that spanned over 70 years, but Richland Center is the place where it all began. Wright's father, William, came here in 1867 as the pastor of the Baptist Church and was involved with building the church. So there are actually two Wright design buildings, one by the father and one by the son. The 80 German warehouse is really the most important building, and it's the only one that Wright is directly responsible for designing. Wright's architecture is very iconic. It's very important in the art history and architecture world. The 80 German warehouse is placed on the National Register of Historic Places, and when I talk to people, I always say, what would you do if you had a national treasure in your backyard? Because, friends, this is a national treasure. This is in Richland Center. This is right in the middle of town. This paired with this being Wright's birthplace is very important for our community's history. So the Wright of Spring Festival is Wright's birthday. We usually celebrate it here at the Conservancy in the first weekend of June. And having this festival is a way to not only celebrate Wright's birthday, but also incorporate our community and showcase to anyone that comes all the cool things we have here. So because the AD German Warehouse Conservancy owns both buildings, we refer to the Wright one as simply the warehouse, and then the other building, the event space building, the 1912. The AD German Warehouse is one of more than 20 stops during Richland Center's wine walks held twice a year, when hundreds of people hit the streets popping in and out of the downtown shops, and of course, enjoying libations along the way. And at the 1912, visitors can ring in the weekend at a number of finally Friday events. This is like a jewel for the Driftless area. We have all sorts of events that come in all year long. We can come in on Friday nights, we can listen to music, we do a mystery dinner. I mean, there's like something always going on. And in Wisconsin, when it gets slow in the winter, this has been awesome. Believe it or not, this is one of the oldest buildings in town. It was a boarding house. This one right here? Yeah. Really? And there's this cute little bungalow here, and then a Queen Anne here. here. Oh, I love that one. I got to cruise the streets of Richland Center with local lawn arbogast, and he taught me so much about the architecture here. I had no idea how interesting it was. We got to not only drive by, but we actually stopped into a few of the homes and got an inside peek of them. It was definitely one of the more memorable things I did here in Richland Center. Download a free itinerary with suggestions for your Richland Center getaway at discoverwisconsin.com. Up next, I check out some of the local family hotspots. We'll be right back. Discover Wisconsin is back, exploring Richland Center. Richland Center has plenty of local hotspots perfect for spending quality time with the family. 
Check out who's tearing up the track at the annual Four Seasons of Fun, or slow it down and relish in the old-fashioned ambiance of the Wheels of Time Festival. Well, this event started in 1982, and it was just a couple guys wanting to bring old stuff out of the shed and show off what they had. Kind of proud of the old stuff. I like the challenge of taking something that's old and making it useful and making it run, restoring. You know, that, that's my goal is just to restore it so other people can enjoy it. When you got a 140, 150 tractors here, there's a story behind every one of them and every owner likes to tell the story. And that's what really this whole Richmond Center area is, is about the past history. It all ties in together. If you're looking to kick the energy up a notch, scoot over to Galaxy Skate, where every Thursday is retro night. Roller skating has been kind of a passion of mine pretty much all my life. It was somewhat like a saving grace. It kept me out of trouble. It became our lifeblood. If this place was open, we were here. And now owning it, it just gives me a sense of satisfaction. There's not a lot of things that you can do as a family, but roller skating is one of them. And I will continue living on SpaghettiOs the rest of my life if it means making sure that this place is still here. Bronc riding, pole bending, and breakaway roping. Welcome to the Wisconsin High School Rodeo Finals, held every June at the Richland County Fairgrounds. The most exciting part about competing at the Richland Center High School Rodeo State Finals is the competition and the atmosphere. It's so fierce, everybody's trying just as hard as you are, and the crowd gets loud, the music is loud, and it really gets you pumped up to see how good you can do. My favorite part about rodeo is the satisfaction after a good run and the friends and the memories that you make while rodeoing. It's an adrenaline rush, it really is. It's so exciting and everyone loves it. For a classic fall getaway to Richland Center, you are definitely going to want to make a stop at a place called Oakwood Fruit Farm. It is your quintessential fall destination. The first time I walked into the apple shed, what I noticed right away, the smell. The smell is delicious. Ah, uh, it's the best. Yes, it is. <laughs> Everybody smells those delicious apple cider donuts. Yes, and, yes. And nothing's better than an apple cider donut right out of the fryer. I agree with you. Right, there. they're the best. <laughs> Another thing that everybody likes is enjoying a caramel apple. And we have unique toppings on our caramel apples. So do a lot of people do a little bit of just like Christmas shopping here? They do, okay. they start their Christmas shopping early. We have a lot of local products from the area and from within Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's, that's what makes a great gift, something yeah. local. Oh, I totally agree. <laughs> I love just seeing everybody come back each year. So you are very much a part of a lot of families' fall traditions. We really are. You know, there's always the families that say, oh, this first weekend of, of October, that's when we make our trip to the apple orchard. Mm -hmm. Enjoy all of those things of fall that you think of. Got my apples. I think we're good. Time to check out. Stream episodes on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, Roku, Chromecast, and Smart TV. When we return, I explore the books, bites, views, and brews of Richland Center. Welcome back to Richland Center, right here on Discover Wisconsin. Get involved in Richland Center's community culture by heading on over to Red Door Art Gallery, where creative meets quirky. This local art gallery highlights over 25 local artists at a time and offers original art, fine crafts, and unusual gifts. Part of our mission is to educate and to let people who have a creative instinct have a place to display their art and to sell their art. When I first started working at the gallery, I was just amazed at how many people in the community are really good artists and the, and the different types of art they do. I was a musician and when I could no longer sing, the color went out of my life. I really liked art and I, I knew a lot about art history, but I had never done any. And an art teacher friend of mine said, well, why don't you paint? And so I started with watercolor and thoroughly love it. Just across the street from Red Door is Okooch Books and Libations, where you can wet your whistle while you feed on some fiction. People come to town, 
And this bookstore is in the middle of it. It's like a waiting place to go to any place else. And like I say, I try to keep it up for everybody. This is a place for people to go to travel. And often they take books with them traveling, but they also come here during the cold parts of winter to have something to read. This finishes off the downtown. Maybe it anchors it. It's nice to have books be representing your town. We're basically provisioning the people who like to sit and drink wine and read books. Enjoy. I visited a working mill in Lone Rock, Wisconsin, a community about 15 minutes east of Richland Center. It was really cool to hear that Gilbert is all about using local crops and working with local farmers to produce some really great products that you can find throughout the state. Gilbert, what is Lonesome Stone Milling? What do you do here? Well, we are a small, organic certified and locally sourced stone flour mill. We buy our grain primarily from Driftless Area Family Farms. Mm -hmm. So this is my first time at a mill like this yes. one, and I got to see the inside, which looked a little more modern to me, mm -hmm. and then you come out here and you see what looks to me like a very vintage piece <laughs> of equipment. Yes, it is. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about this. This is a 1947 Clipper 29D, and mm -hmm. it's been here since the 60s. Mm -hmm. We're using a very traditional process, which produces a flavorful and healthy food product while working with farmers to maintain and improve the agricultural water quality in the Driftless area through crop rotation and quality farming, and then we're making a healthy product. So would you say you're pretty ingrained in milling? Well, for that, you get bad pun of the oh, week. Oh, bad pun? <laughs> well, you won't catch me loafing around here. Oh, well done, <laughs> well done. I got a rise out of that, didn't I? <laughs> Okay, you win. Right next door is a really cool little bar and grill called The Woods. When I travel, I love, love, love to find spots like this. I think it's the perfect way to get to know the locals. If you don't go in there knowing everyone, you're definitely going to leave having met a friend or two. We keep it very casual, and we like to kind of think we do a step above your normal bar and grill. The house barbecue sauce was in the making for quite a while. It's a little bit different. It's got a touch of tequila, a little bit of lime in it, which is kind of rare in the barbecue sauce world. I think people keep coming back here for our service, the food, and the convenience. I mean, we're in a tri-county area, and it's just we're in a perfect location. This looks amazing. Yes, there you are. Thank you, Cal. Oh my gosh, look at this. Okay, we have a Lone Rock steak sandwich with some fries and a pickle, of course. Oh, are you kidding me? The woods is where it's at. Check out behind the scenes photos from our cruise time in Richland Center at discoverwisconsin.com. After the break, I become one with nature. Stay with us. We're getting off the beaten path in Richland Center right here on Discover Wisconsin. More than a thousand years ago, native people of southern Wisconsin built effigy mounds to bury and celebrate their ancestors. Today, Richland County has one of the highest concentrations of effigy mounds in the world. Visitors can enjoy these monuments while hiking up Franks Hill. We're standing at Franks Hill, which is also known as the Shadowwald Mound Group and is on the National Register of Historic Places as such. It is approximately a thousand years old and they are made of dirt. We kind of divide the mounds up into air spirits, land spirits, and water spirits. They have shapes at this location in the form of a coyote, a bison, a bird, a beaver, and a snake or a coiled serpent. So in addition to the wonderful scenic beauty of the Driftless region, we also have this rich cultural history, this tapestry of human existence that overlays all the natural history. Ask anyone around this area and they'll tell you all about the wonders of trout fishing in Richland Center. I got to take in a little trout fishing with Len and Gary right outside of Richland Center along the Pine River. 
I do love to fish. I have not done a ton of trout fishing though, so it was really fun to learn from the experts in the area um, as to how to really try and land that fish. So what would you say are like the top three tips I need to know as a novice angler? Cast upstream. Cast upstream, okay, got it. No bright clothing. No bright clothing, because the trout can see it, it scares them away, okay. Trout cannot hear you yell. And everyone says, gotta be quiet when you're fishing. This stomp in the ground is like shouting at them. Uh, you, the vibration, vibration okay. it goes into the water and they scurry away. Now, what is it about fishing that you guys love so much? It was coming back to areas where family had fished and the pleasant memories that were created throughout the years, but also the unknown and the diversity of fishing in this area. I've been fishing and I, I use it for an escape. Spending the time in the outdoors, I used it as a tool to unwind in a career. Mm -hmm. And it, it's always then became my peace and tranquility also. I, I think it's just the quality of the water here. And trout don't live in ugly places. Yeah. We've actually hit this stretch pretty good. It's been about 10 casts, so. You think we're ready to we're go? We're gonna move up to where that current is right there and see if there's anything laying below the current. When you've got beautiful winding rivers like you see here in the Richland Center area, I think of two things. I think of fishing. I also think of kayaking. I heard that Richland County had really been embracing accessibility landings at their boat launches, which I'm a huge proponent of. I really do believe everyone should get to enjoy the outdoors, especially here in Wisconsin. It was, it was uh, difficult to just know that I'll be able to kayak. You always doubt yourself, but that's human being thinking. And anybody doubts themselves for anything. You know, once you're in the water, there's no turning back. I love this because I think that the outdoors and, you know, activities like hiking should be available to everyone on the planet. Yeah. And just sitting here watching you with the ability to get out of the water really unassisted is a kind of luxury that the rest of us, I think, maybe sometimes take for granted. So to see that Richland Center is a community that's truly embracing that, what does that mean to you? You know, it's like, I, I was very independent feeling when I come down the river to the rapids and even pulling myself onto the land without floating down the river. It means the world to me. I get a lot of people asking me, where can I go that's a little bit off the beaten path? This is one of those places that I would list for you. Without a doubt, this is the kind of place where you can sit next to a local, ask them for their favorite tips in the area, check out the restaurants, and hit up the amazing riverways and parks in the area. It's just that kind of laid back, casual vibe and beautiful scenery that you get here in the Richland Center area. Stream Discover Wisconsin anywhere, anytime. Continue the adventure on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, Roku, Smart TV, Chromecast, and discoverwisconsin.com.